Water pumping some FDNY. Everyone, please rise for the presentation of the colors by the FDNY ceremonial unit.
Please remain standing as I invite New York City firefighter Jerry Riddle to sing the national anthem. Big down and salute! by FDN White Chaplain, Father Joseph Hoffman. Ready? Let us recall that we are in the presence of God. Heavenly Father, we come together today to recall and celebrate the life and dedication of your son, Christopher. We thank you for giving him to us, and we are especially grateful today as we recall his life of service and dedication the fire department here in Comac, to the FBNY in New York City, and serving his country as a member of the Air Force, and to all whose lives he touched. Chris was a true servant of others, risking his life to save and help others, racing toward difficult and unsafe situations while others fled them, showing concern and compassion for the good of others instead of focusing on just himself. He sacrificed everything so that others could be safe and live. So great was this commitment that he made the ultimate sacrifice so that others might live. Lord, we thank you for Christopher and for all that he taught us. Help us to remember him always, not just for the dedication of the street in his name, but by learning to live daily in our lives the values that he exhibited each day of his life. We ask you to bless his family, our FBNY family, our local fire departments, our country, and all who give of themselves each day. Amen. Good morning. My name is Commissioner Stephen Fontana of the Comac Fire District. And I'd like to thank everyone for coming to today's street code naming ceremony. Oh, please be seated. <laughs> I would like to thank everyone for coming to today's street code naming ceremony for New York City Fire Lieutenant and Comac Fire Department Honorary Chief, Christopher J. Raguso, who was lost to us on March 15, 2018. I would like now to introduce the members of our dais. Fire Commissioner Daniel Nigro. <laughs> Chief of Department John Sudnick. United States Air Force Colonel Wing Commander Michael Bank. United States Air Force Senior Chief Master Sergeant Michael Hewson. Cormac Fire District Commissioner Patrick Fazio. Cormac Fire Department Chief of Department Bobby Wilkins. Suffolk County PD, Chief of Department, Stu Cameron. <laughs> Chief of Fire Operations, Thomas Richardson. New York State Senator, John Flanagan. New York State Assembly Member, Michael Fitzpatrick. New York State Assembly Member, Andrew Rea. Suffolk County Executive, Steve Ballone. 
In our second row, we have FDN White Chaplain, Father Joseph Hoffman. One of my fire department chaplain, Stephen Mullenbrook. Assistant Commissioner of Family Assistance, Evelyn Tesorio. President of the Uniform Fire Officers Association, Jake Lamanda. UFA Queens Trustee, Matthew Desjardins. Cormac Fire Department First Assistant Chief Kieran King. Cormac Fire Department Third Assistant Chief Paul Perizella. The Suffolk County Comptroller John Kennedy. Suffolk County District 12 Legislator Leslie Kennedy. I would also like to thank, uh, acknowledge many other gov governmental officials that are in the crowd with us today. We are especially honored to have the family of Lieutenant and Honorary Chief Christopher J. Raguso here with us today. His wife Carmela. His daughters, Mila and Eva, his mother and father, Laura and John, and his brother Mark, as well as a number of other family members and close personal friends, welcome to you all. I am honored to introduce our first speaker, New York City Fire Commissioner Daniel Migra. Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for coming together to honor and to remember Lieutenant Christopher Raguso. Today is about remembering his sacrifice and the extraordinary life of service that he lived. Here in Comac as a volunteer firefighter, in New York City as a member of the FDNY, and around the world as a Master Sergeant of the New York Air National Guard. In Iraq and Afghanistan, he flew into combat zones to rescue his fellow service members. Across the country, he responded to rescue trapped people from hurricane flooded cities. In the five boroughs, he responded to fires and saved people from danger. And here in Comac, he left his own family to protect the community he loved. He was an incredible person, a true hero, and that sense of giving back to others began at home. You can see that in the way his family continues to give back in his name. And I'd like to thank the Ragusas for their generosity. Despite their pain and grieving, they have raised funds to support FDNY members and their families, including probationary firefighter Derek Floyd, the family of firefighter George Shear, and the family of firefighter Christopher Sluckman, who, like Lieutenant Ragusa, lost his life while serving his country. Christopher Sluckman's wife, Shannon, is here with us this morning. And I'd like to acknowledge her and thank her for being here. Thank you for being with us, Sean. This community rallied around Chris's family, supporting his parents, his wife Carmela, and their wonderful daughters, Eva and Mila. The yellow ribbons were seen on blocks throughout this neighborhood. Today, this same community gathers to permanently memorialize him with this street that will bear his name. None of us in the FDNY will ever forget Chris Ragusa. Today, we are very proud to be a part of this ceremony to ensure that his name will forever live on in this community that he so bravely protected. Thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner Nigro. Next, we will hear from United States Air Force Senior Chief Master Sergeant Mike Houston. When I die, I'm coming back as me. Ask me how my day is going, and that's probably the response that you're going to get. Like Chris, I've had the honor to serve, uh, live a life of service. I have been in the Air Force for over 33 years. Before retiring, I spent 24 years with Suffolk County Police Emergency Services. And it's not the jobs that made my life feel great. It's the absolute privilege I've had to work besides men like Chris Raguso. And I wouldn't trade that for anything. Our mission at the 106 Rescue is combat rescue. And to me, it is the noblest mission in the military. When there are soldiers in a firefight or an ID blast that injures our fellow Americans, we're the ones that they call to save them. 
2012, our unit deployed to Afghanistan, and in 120 days, we answered that call 200 times and saved at least that many lives. As a pararescue man, there was nobody I would rather have in that helicopter to cover me and lay hate down upon the enemy with that 50 caliber machine gun than Chris. After that deployment, Chris's squadron members said something changed in him. He became a lot more focused and started taking on a lot bigger leadership role. Upon returning home, Chris started a new tradition, a Christmas party for the squadron, and he called it the Jolly Ball. This reference is a rescue tradition where the members of rescue are known as Jolly Green Giants. Chris insisted it be held as a military event with all the formalities that were associated. We all wore our dress blues, with one exception, we wore a, wore a jolly green tie. The biggest surprise of the night was when Chris got up and sang God Bless America, as the, as the colors were posted. I don't think Chris was much of a singer, but, every, but everybody imploded his rendition. His next project was to convert little used office space into a heritage room. This was a place where the squadron would celebrate its history of Jolly Green Giants. The centerpiece of the room was displayed a dedication to Chief Master Sergeant Dennis Richardson. Chief Richardson was awarded the Air Force Cross for bravery in combat. The room did exactly what Chris intended. It provides a place and a reminder to everybody to never forget those who came before them. Chris was pulling a team together. Fast forward to 2015, and Chris is deployed to the Horn of Africa. Although the area is a hotbed of action between Somalia and Yemen, the missions are more predictable and are well planned out assaults on terrorist strongholds. Knowing this, Chris decided to sign up for FDNY's lieutenant's test and study while he was deployed. On this trip, there were five other members of the FDNY and Chris, Chris pressured them, like only Chris could do, to sign up for the test and form a study group. Rumor has it that one of the guys didn't want to participate, but Chris found a way to sign him up without his knowledge. And once deployed, Chris applied the pressure again. All of them passed the test, and five of their six have already been promoted to lieutenant. Good leaders get people to believe in them. Great leaders get people to believe in themselves. Chris was a great leader. One of the Air Force's core values is service before self. Chris served the community as a volunteer fireman. He served New York City as a firefighter. And Chris served the nation and a state as a leader and a warrior in the 106 Rescue Wing. Chris's goal was to become a chief in all three of these jobs. And I have no doubt with a little bit more time he would have accomplished this easily. When I die, maybe I want to come back as Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Houston. Next one we are going to hear from Cormac Fire Department Chief of Department, Bobby Wilkins. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of myself, my assistants, and the Board of Fire Commissioners, I would like to welcome everyone to this very special event. I would particularly like to acknowledge the Raguso family, Chris's wife, Carmela, his daughters, Mia and Eva, his parents, John and Laura, his brother, Mark, and all of Chris's extended family and friends who are in attendance today. As we gather here today, it's a day of sorrow, but it's also a day of celebration. Sorrow because we are reminded of the tragic events of March 15th, 2018, that took Chris on us all. But it's also celebratory because we get the opportunity to once again honor our brother, honor him for his courage, honor him for his bravery, and honor him for his sacrifice. Before I go any further, I'd like to extend my gratitude to Senator Flanagan and Assemblyman Fitzpatrick and Rhea for sponsoring the legislation to make this possible. I would like I would also like to commend Governor Cuomo for signing the bill to designate this eight and a half mile portion of 
Jericho Turnpike as the Christopher J. Raguso FDNY CFD Memorial Highway. I am honored to host this event and be given the opportunity to talk briefly about Chris. Like many of us, Chris got his life's wake-up call right here at this very firehouse, having been sworn into the department in the year 2000. As a young man, not really having much of a plan, it was here that the people he met, the friendships he formed, and the experiences he had shaped him to be the man that we all came to love. The start here was where it became apparent that his love and desire to be in service of others. This is where the path to his careers with the FDNY and the United States Air National Guard would start. But the most important thing to come from in its place is that it led him to the love of his life, Carmela, and the start of his beautiful family. And just like he was for his family, he was such an inspiration for so many of us here. A leader, a mentor, a true example of what we should all strive to be. He carried himself in a certain way. He always pushed the limits, always raising the bar, challenging everyone around him to be better. He stood for things like honor, integrity, and most of all, brotherhood. He never forgot what his mentors did for him, and he paid it forward tenfold. I am certain that there's dozens of people out there today in attendance that at some point, Chris took them underneath his wing. They had that sit-down chat with him over some like exotic glass of wine, because it can never just be like a domestic beer. It always had to be something, something crazy from like Bora Bora. He never had a domestic beer with the guy. Right? And whether it was, it was for advice or just to sit you down and point you in the right direction, I'm sure there's dozens of, people, dozens of people here that had that experience with them. Right? And at the end, you always got that famous loose hug, right? As his brother in law, Stephen, describes it best, it was a hug that just lasted a little too long. Right? <laughs> you thought it was over with, but no, he just held on to you, right? And then he would take his head with that brillo pad of hair that he had and he put it on your shoulder you'd get that sigh from, <laughs> right? You guys know what I'm talking about. But that was Chris. That's why we loved him, that's why we respected him, and that's why we cherished him. All these qualities and many other like were all formed right here at this very firehouse. So it's nothing but appropriate that Jericho Turnpike, a, run, a, a street that runs directly through the heart of our fire district, be renamed in his honor. Very short time from now, the sign that will hang at this very firehouse will be unveiled. Let that sign serve not only as a reminder of Chris's legacy, but also as a reminder of the obligation each and every one of us has to make sure we carry on that legacy. Like I've said in the past, as a department, it's our job to keep Chris's legacy alive by adopting his ways and making them our own. We will push ourselves and each other to be better, just like Chris would. We do that little bit of extra, as he would put it, for the boys. We must pay it forward by taking the time to guard, guide, and mentor those in need, just as he did. But most importantly, we must continue to tell the story of Christopher J. Ragusa in order to keep his memory alive so he can continue to be an inspiration for all of us as the true American hero he really is. This has been an honor. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Chief Wilkins. Now I'd like to pull up New York State Senator John Flanagan. Good morning, everyone. I'm absolutely humbled and privileged to be here with all of you today, and it's a lot cooler sitting up here than sitting out there. I apologize for that. I want to thank Chief Wilkins, Commissioner Fontana, Commissioner Nigro, Master Sergeant, and all the people who are here in a volunteer capacity or in a paid capacity, all our men and women in uniform, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for who you are, what you do, how you do it, when you do it, how often you do it. Thank God we have you out there. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge also as well my new colleague in the New York State Senate who's joined us as well. He was a strong supporter of this legislation, Senator Jim Bourne. So in listening quickly to some of the stories and hearing people speak over here, I, I just, for me, I try and put things in perspective. So being a volunteer, serving as a firefighter, becoming a lieutenant, becoming a rescue hero, doing all those things, they're all secondary. So the way, and I didn't know Chris. I've learned about him, but I've had an opportunity to read a lot about him. 
So the first thing I remember, particularly after meeting with his father this week, is that he was a son. He was a son to John and Laura. Then he became a husband to his beautiful wife. And then God graced him with two beautiful children. So a son, a husband, and a father all melded in or melded in with his incredible service. So I had a very interesting visit this week from Mr. Ragusa. Came in, he said, I just want five minutes. I want to tell you a little bit more about Chris. May help you for ceremony on Saturday. And I've come to learn that there's no such thing as five minutes. <laughs> Which was great, because we had a wonderful discussion, and he told me more about his son. And for those of you who remember the movie Jaws, I was thinking of myself with John and his son. He was telling me some stories about being a charter boat captain. So I imagined him playing Robert Shaw, and I imagined Chris playing Richard Dreyfus, and I happen to be Roy Scheider. These guys would be telling stories this Mako got me here. Chris would say, this building fell on me and I got these scars. And I'd be like Roy Scharder pulling on my shirt saying, well, I got this little hernia scar over here that means nothing compared to what these folks have been through. So in our lives in government, our threshold and our fundamental obligation is to help people. Chris's name being on this stretch of highway is really amazing. And it is important because people will drive by. And there will be thousands of people, thousands of people who will see that name. Some will know it, some will learn about it, and they will tell other people. And a little tongue in cheek, a lot of people are gonna have time to see those signs. That way, this way, here, because of the traffic. Remember the traffic? So, Carmel, I just wanna let you know, when you're praying, you're talking to Chris, tell him he is now responsible for the traffic along this eight mile stretch and hopefully he can do a much better job than we do in government. But to the, um, to the Ruguso family and everyone involved, I am honored, truly honored. And I've been in government a long time, truly honored to be able to be part of this ceremony and to talk about Chris. Facebook, whatever it may be, social media. John said he will have inspired 20 people. It's gonna be a hell of a lot more than 20 people. Reading about him made me take a step back, think about my own life and my commitment to what I do, and my family, and my community, and I feel blessed, like everyone else who's here, to be part of the ceremony today. Carmel, Carmela, to you and the girls and to the family, God bless you, God bless the United States of America. The most important was, God bless Chris Ragusa. Thank you, Senator Flanagan. Now I'd like to introduce your Assemblyman, Michael Fitzpatrick. Thank you, Steve. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, indeed a pleasure for me and an honor to, uh, to welcome by all of you at this wonderful ceremony. Uh, thank you to the Conway Fire Department, its membership, its leadership, the FDNY, the Great 106, uh, and the community of Conway. British, uh, British Prime Minister, the late Winston Churchill, once said that the price of greatness is responsibility. And Chris had a profound sense of responsibility to his beautiful wife, Carmela, his two adorable daughters, his wonderful parents, brother, his extended families, to the community of Comac, to his brother firefighters in Comac and FDNY, and a great sense of responsibility to the nation in the service in the 106. Chris was a great man long before the tragic events back in March of 2018. We all knew that because we all felt that sense of responsibility that he had for each and every one of us through the different capacities in which he served. It is truly an honor for me to be invited to participate in this ceremony and I thank you very much. Uh, we will miss him terribly. I wish I knew him better. Uh, I did not have a lot of, spend a lot of time with Chris, but the stories that have been told about him by his dad and others, uh, he was one very special human being, uh, a great, great man. And we know that because of the sense of responsibility that he had to all of us. Thank you, Carmela. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Russo and family. 
this is a very special day. Uh, we're very proud to have played a part in this by passing this legislation. Uh, thank you all for being here, and uh, thank you very much for the hat that I will forever treasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Assemblyman Mike Fitzpatrick. Now I'll introduce New York State Assemblyman Andrew Rea. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the 12th Assembly District. Uh, I'd just like to briefly recognize Councilman uh, Gene Cook and our town clerk, Joanne Rea. As, as, as uh, Assemblyman Fitzpatrick pointed out, uh, Mr. Gusso was nice enough, nice enough to give us these wonderful hats with our names on them. Uh, I've probably gotten over 100 hats in my 17 years in the State Assembly. I will not, this will be the one that will be treasured the most. Um, for the last year and a half, I've also had Chris's uh, mask card hanging on my refrigerator so I can remember him every day. I walked past him, and uh, I had some friends over a couple weeks ago, and they asked, Isn't that a little odd you have a mask card sitting on the refrigerator? And without missing a beat, I said, absolutely not. This gentleman's a hero. He's a hero to our country, he's a hero to our local fire department, and he's a hero to me. Now, I never, never knew Chris, but we shared a very special relationship. Uh, about 14, 15 years ago, my office got a, a call to try and help uh, a, a young man to get into the FDNY. And like all of my colleagues do, we write a letter, we make a phone call. More often than not, we're successful, but in many instances, you just never know if you were successful or not. Well, it turns out, Chris did get to the FDNY. I had never realized it until that fateful day at the funeral where Carmela John came up to me and reminded me that, uh, that you had a stake in his career. Uh, in my, as I look forward to possibly uh, uh, moving on, I can honestly say it's going to be the highlight of all my many years in Albany is just knowing that you made a difference in somebody who went on to becoming a hero to each and every one of us. So, no matter where I go, you will always be in my heart. I have a proclamation uh, from all of my colleagues up here. These are just words on a piece of paper. It was the actions that Christopher took day in and day out that are the, have real meaning in all of our lives. So thank you, God bless you, God bless Chris, and uh, it's a wonderful day. Thank you, Assemblyman Gray. Next we will hear from the Suffolk County Executive, Steve Ballone. Good morning, it is indeed an honor to be here today to pay tribute to one of our community heroes and a genuine American hero, Chris Raguso. It's an honor to be here with all of our uh, members of public service, Comac Fire Department, the FDNY, all the members of 106, we thank them for the service to our country. Uh, to all law enforcement officers, I thank them for what they do for us each and every day. But it is truly an honor to be here with Chris's family, John and Laura, Carmela, Neil and Eva, and Mark, and and the family. You know, we've heard a lot um, about Chris this morning, uh, and without wanting to state the obvious, let me just say that he is uh, an extraordinary human being in every respect. You know, people will ask me all the time um, as Suffolk County Executive, what makes Suffolk County special? And, you know, everybody has their own theory. Some people will say, uh, is it special because you have the Hamptons? I said, no, that's not it. Uh, well, you have Fire Island, and you have the seashore, you have beautiful beaches, and you have all of these wonderful things. You have world-class fishing, just ask Captain Gusso. And I say that all those things are true, but that's not it. Start with that in Suffolk County, we have more veterans 
living here than in any other place in the state of New York and almost anywhere in the country. <laughs> add on to that, add on to that, that you have thousands of people who step forward and volunteer to serve their communities in uh, our, as our first responders in our fire departments and emergency response uh, services. You have members of the FDNY, so many of whom come from Suffolk County. These are the kind of people that you build communities around. These are the foundations of this community, of Suffolk County. And when you think about it, Chris Raguso did all of those things. It is extraordinary. And then, of course, I meet Carmela and John, and I learn Mark and Lauren. You know, he was also a great musician. He was also a teacher, an educator. This was a, a man who, who just uh, imbued public service. He was a mentor to so many people. It would not be in any way an exaggeration to say that Chris Russo was a modern day renaissance. He truly, I asked the question at one point, is there anything he didn't do? <laughs> I'll keep that secret. <laughs> but he is part of Chris Raguso. He's part of a legacy of service in our country that goes back more than 240 years. You know, earlier this summer, the world commemorated the 75th anniversary of perhaps the most significant battle in human history, the D-Day invasion of Normandy, France. And President Reagan gave a famous speech 35 years ago on the 40th anniversary. And he said, what kind of courage does it take to do what these men did? What does it take to answer the call for such a dangerous mission as this? And I think all of us here today as we gather, know the answer to President Reagan's question 35 years later. It takes men like Chris Ragusa. That's what it takes. The flag that is flying above this firehouse today was flown over Normandy, France, at the American Cemetery at Omaha Beach on June 6th this year, on the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Chris Ragusa stands with those men who stormed those beaches and all of those who have served and fought and sacrificed for our nation. That flag flies here today to honor him for an extraordinary lifetime of service to this community, to this county, to the city of New York, and to our nation that is virtually unparalleled. His legacy Putting up this sign is really important because it's important to all of us for people to see, for dads and moms to be able to tell their kids who Chris Raguso is. That's why that's important. But Chris Raguso's legacy is, is not this street, not this road, not this sign. His legacy is his family, his beautiful girls. All of the people that he has mentored and touched in his life, whose lives he has changed and the example that he has set for all of us for public service in this nation. Chris Rebrusa. John asked me to speak. Actually, John told me I was speaking. John doesn't really, John doesn't really ask. I said, of course. And he said, you have to speak because Chris was one of your guys. By that he meant Chris was one of Suffolk County, Suffolk County's guys. And he hit the nail on the head there. But I'll tell you this, Chris Ragusa is never just one of the guys. He represents the best of us. And he is a model for all of us. And I'm honored to be here today with him and his family as we dedicate this road to an American hero. Thank you. God bless you. God bless the Reduso family. God bless the family. Thank you, Mr. Malone. Next, we will hear from Suffolk County Comptroller John Kennedy.
was going to present the proclamation to Lieutenant Christopher Lucia's family. I don't know what else I can add to everything that's been said about your husband. Truly an extraordinary man, somebody who gave such great distinction to the community, your family, but most importantly, as everybody has set up on the stage, to us here in Suffolk County. I think the thing that Senator Flanagan said probably is the thing that comes to mind most for each and every one of us. What your husband, what your son has done for us, makes each and every one of us want to be a better person. Uh, he just had it in his genes. He had it in his DNA. Absolutely, positively, each and every day, what he did in a quiet way is something that's inspiration for each and every one of us. I think the message for today is, is to remember him, to remember his legacy, but more importantly, hope that each and every one of us could just be half the person that Chris has been. Thank you for having shared him with us. Thank you for everything that he's done. We will never, ever, ever forget. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Next, we will hear from Suffolk County District 12 legislator Leslie Kennedy, who is going to present the proclamation to Lieutenant and Honorary Chief Christopher Russo's family. Thank you for raising and for loving and caring for our hero. Okay, while she's up here, Next, we are going to hear from Lieutenant and Army Chief Christopher Russo's wife, Carmela. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, it's about 11.20. Um, what a beautiful day. I thank you all for coming here today to help us honor my beautiful husband. Thank you to my father-in-law. Oh, right, right. Hey, Grandpa. Um, thank you for your hard work and putting all this together. Team effort. And thank you to everyone here on the dais for being here today, speaking so greatly of my husband and helping us celebrate a great life. Today is a happy day. A very happy day. Thank you to the Comac Fire Department for hosting us today. You have always come through. Listen, I'm not as good at this as you guys are. Okay. Got it. I'm so honored that this stretch of road is being named after Christopher Joseph. This road holds a lot of fond memories for us. Not just me getting multiple tickets for a variety of traffic infractions and maybe a few fender benders. Thanks CFD for the quick response. It was more of a drill than uh, an accident to fund but, but also the memories that will forever be ingrained into my mind. One in particular of mine and Chris's was our first date in the fire truck. I was nervous that Chris might get in trouble for taking me out on a ride, and I expressed as much to him when he informed me ever so confidently, don't worry, Carm, I'm kind of a big deal around here. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it, it, whatever he said worked, because we got married. <laughs> or when he took me on a ride on his motorcycle down Jericho, and I had to come home and explain to my dad why I came home with such messy hair. You can imagine my father's disapproval when I told him I was on the back of a boy's motorcycle. 
or frantically driving to St. Catharines after my water broke on the couch in our living room when we had our meal up. Or when we really frantically drove down Jericho Turnpike to St. Catharines when I was in labor with Eva at 4 a.m. And Chris rolls over and says, babe, just walk it off. If I'm the last one, we were there for hours before anything happened. Can I have a few more minutes of sleep, please? We barely made that one. Barely made that one. Do you even know how many red light tickets Christopher Joseph has got along the street? Yeah. But he always swore, Carm, it wasn't me. Chris, I have the photo of you on the ticket. You're smiling and blowing the light. Yes. Um, I, I have a, a great photo shoot courtesy of the Suffolk County chapter board of my husband driving his car. Uh, in fact, all of his traffic infractions and red light ticket fees have paid for the fancy signs that will be a long Jericho term by Thank you, Chris Reduso. It's kind of a big deal. Anything to get into the spotlight, babe. But the best part of this long stretch of Jericho, and even beyond just this stretch, named after Christopher Joseph, is that everywhere I go, I see a Chris American flag magnet or a Chris sticker on someone's car. And there are no words to tell you how that makes me feel. It seems that when I'm having a tough day, these magnets appear and these stickers appear to let me know how much love and support me and the girls have in this community. It's hard to imagine that one day my girls will be old enough to drive, and I hope that when they see the signs on Jericho Turnpike with their father's name, they will remember how incredibly loved their daddy is. Thank you for coming out today. I am so proud to be a part of this awesome community. Thank you for all the love you've shown to me, my girls, my family, and especially Christopher J. Today's a happy day. No tears allowed, don't worry, Mila. I thank you all so much. Thanks for coming out. Carmella. And our final speaker, a man who said he will keep it short and sweet, is Lieutenant and Honorary Chief Christopher Raguso's father, Mr. John Raguso. I believe he owes out some presentations to me. You know this is going to be great, because he had to be in Jersey two hours ago, and he's sticking around for what I'm going to say. <laughs> All right. Well, there's a scripted part of this program, but we are officially going unscripted right now. So uh, there's a couple of guys out there that I've known for the last 50 years. I think uh, Kenny McGorry and uh, Greg B. Are you out there somewhere? Oh, there they are. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story, and I will keep this as short and sweet as I can. A lot of you guys know me as like six different people. What a shock that CRISPR was ten different people, right? I guess apples and trees don't really fall far from each other. Mark is only like three different people. So Chris had him beat, and I got them both beat. If you had them both up, I got them both covered. So one guy is the MBA marketing guy. Went to a Jesuit school for eight years, got my MBA from the city, in the city, taught at NYU. Wow, you can't get more in New York than that. Another part is Captain John, many of you are familiar with, the uh, make go give me any hand story. So yep, Captain John out there. Uh, then there is uh, adjunct professor and seminar speaker John. Some of you know me, some of you don't. 
and there's outdoor writer John. Just Google my name. You'll see 3,500 articles that I've written over the last, you know, 35 years or so, which say, who's that guy? Is that the same guy? Then, of course, there's, a, I dare to say this in front of the senator, NRA instructor John. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I do that too. But before it was any of those guys, I was rock and roll John. Say what? Well, I'm 69 and a half when I started playing the guitar when I was 12. So elementary mathematics says that for the last 57 and a half years, I was this other guy that none of you really know about. All that's going to change right now. I'm going to dedicate this song to those very handsome, stiff young men and young women over there from the 101st and the 102nd and the 106th who've never seen this happen before on the stage for a street dedication, as you're going to see this today. Anyway, uh, this is a song by Neil Young. This is appropriate because 10 years ago we played this song at Carmella and Chris's wedding. We're gonna do an abridged version of this right now. And uh, once again, I'm dedicating this to the Air Force and to all the Piper drum guys out there who are still here. I promise I will play for you guys. Um, we're gonna, and Chris was a musician and I could think of no other way to honor that young man out of the box than doing what we're doing right now. Commissioner, not too bad for a 69-year-old guy, huh? <laughs> and I'm the oldest guy. So uh, the next song is actually a sing-along. Some of you might want to sing along. 
Some of you might not want to. But you know what? That's the freedom of choice we all have. It goes something like this. Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains, majesties, much for the unscripted part of the program. And now, <laughs> here we go. Before I get into my tribute for Lieutenant Chris, I'd like to thank a number of people whose help and support were critical in making this event a reality. Kudos to Senator Flanagan and Assemblyman Fitzpatrick and Rhea for co-sponsoring the name change bills and the State Senate and Assembly. Thanks to the FDNY ceremonial unit for their production expertise and to the Comac Fire Department for hosting this event on their grounds. Thanks to Suffolk County Executive Steve Malone and his staff and Suffolk County PD for giving us the protection, support, love, and uh, logistics that we needed to carry this thing off. New York State DOT pulled a real mission impossible on this one, getting the new straight name signs designed, manufactured, and installed in less than a month. That's got to be some sort of record. Ain't that right? <laughs> <laughs> like you said, I'd never take no for an answer. So, <laughs> Thanks to FDNY Fire Commissioner Dan Nigro for detouring from a family reunion in South Jersey to be here today. And I promise it's no more than five minutes so you can take off. All right, thanks to all the folks that made the Goosebet Concert Series happen every year. And thanks to all of you that took some time out of your sunny summer weekend to help honor a very special young man who was, by any definition, a true All-American hero. You may see me wearing some things up here. Uh, I've got a Comac shirt in the car. I'm wearing an FDNY shirt. I've got Chris's uh, FDNY Lieutenant's Badge, number 308. I have his uh, Lieutenant's Badge for Station 4, uh, out east. And I got this very special little thing that... One of the guys who he fought with on that last tour came back to the States and gave these to us. You know what that is. You don't need to know. An explanation. That's a SEAL Team Trident. And uh, Mike can't tell you this, and neither can the Colonel, but let's just say that uh, he hung out with those guys more than once or twice. And uh, might have been with them on this last night. It's no secret to anyone that the last 16 months have been extremely dark and challenging times for the Raguso family. I won't rehash the particulars of what happened on March 15th, 2018. However, going back in time, Chris survived a very close call in the first Iraq war in 2004, and he came back a changed man. To quote a line from Dan Aykroyd, who played Elwood K. Blues 
in the 80s Blues Brothers movie, he was on a mission from God. The mission from God included six citations for bravery from FDNY, rescuing 135 Houston residents from the swamps and floodwaters of Hurricane Harvey, and saving north of 400 souls during his 19-year professional career. He also taught many dozens of FDNY and CFP rookies how to be a professional firefighter, and many of you are in the audience right now. You know who you are. Chris led by example from out in front, giving max effort at all times. He was a top-notch master sergeant and flight engineer, both on the ground and in the air, as a senior chief master sergeant Mike Houston remarked before. He was the one man you wanted to be leading the way when the ships were down and your life was on the line. He didn't just raise the performance bar, he was the bar for everyone else to follow. Who could have guessed that the raw fledgling recruit from Comac Station 2 back in 1999 would one day turn out to be a real life Captain America comic book hero? But as you have seen, being a hero can have its tragic downside with terrible consequences. Chris Slutman's a hero too, and a Marine. And Chris saved a lot of Marines. And you're a Marine too, and you know that when the stuff hits the fan, who do you call? You don't call Ghostbusters, you call the PJs, that man right there, and Chris and his boys, and ladies, and, and friends over there. They fly you in and fly you out. When you look back at the 14 years of extra time that Chris got since his return from the 2004 Iraq war, he put it to good use and did more to change and shape the world in his limited years than most people could do in three lifetimes. President Abraham Lincoln said it best when he remarked, in the end, it's not the number of years in your life that counts, but the life that's in your years that you have. Chris was a poster child for that salient quote and lived a Walter Binney life of a U.S. Air Force combat search and rescue special missions aviator, an FDNY lieutenant, a Colmac Fire Department lieutenant, a home remodeler, expert on all things Star Wars, <laughs> drummer for both the Northport Pipe and Drum Band and the FDNY Emerald Society Pipe and Drum Band. Plus, he was a wonderful husband, a great father, a good son, a great brother, a cousin, and a true friend to many of you out in this audience. Goose was the man. Then the good Lord took him away from us. Suddenly, in a flash, and without warning, or any last goodbyes. We had a FaceTime 40 on his 39th birthday and the next day, the Ides of March 2018, was his last. After being traumatized watching too many of us, the white buddies dying slow and painful deaths from 9-11 disease, including Captain Vinny Angaro, one of those many, Chris died like a warrior on a mission supporting special ops troops in Operation Inherent Resolve, the war against ISIS. But his life did not end on the cold desert sands near the Iraq-Syria border. It was just the beginning of the realization of the greatness of this young man, his achievements, and the inspirational message that his service and sacrifice has taught us every day since then. Mayor Jean Callender, of Great Neck Estates couldn't be here today due to the naming ceremony for her first granddaughter. But the words from the email she sent me last night ring true. And in it, she says, John, I hope all will go well. Although I know it will be another difficult time for you and your family. Christopher is an inspiration to us all for his heroism, strength, convictions, unwavering spirit, 
service of himself, and love of his country. He made the ultimate sacrifice for the ideals of democracy and served bravely to make the world a better and safer place. I am honored to call you a friend. I wish that I had met your son, but no, you must have had a lot of your fine traits. His mother's traits, actually. Uh, your new mission must be what's intended from this tragedy and make a difference helping others in their journeys. And I can see some of those people right there in front of me. Over the past year, we've received dozens of letters, emails, and telephone calls from strangers that all have a common thread. Somebody that was close to them, a son, a daughter, a sister, a brother, a husband, a wife, or a close friend, heard what happened to Chris, read an article, or some, saw something on TV. They were driven by his heroic service to join the military, police, fire department, or volunteer group to step up and take his place. That is a powerful story of inspiration, and in my view, the only reason why the good Lord took Chris from us, but he just did it way too soon. He needed to bring attention to this young patriot's life of service and sacrifice to convince countless others to hear the message, follow his footsteps. Chris didn't have a job or a career path. He had a true calling to serve and was definitely one in a million, but we knew that already. And that brings us to today's street naming, which is a significant milestone in our lives. It represents the end of the beginning. I know Father, you and I talked before, and Stephen, it's like an exorcism. Like Carmela mentioned it before, all the devils, all the evil spirits, all the ghosts are being cast out with the sound of the bagpipes from the Emerald Society band. It represents the end of the beginning, closing the book on a very dark chapter, and finally casting out these ghosts and devils. It is also the beginning of the next chapter, one that will have more hope, more light, more love, where we can focus on the goodness that was Chris, and all the things he brought into this world during the 39 years and one day that he walked on it, laughed on it, fought on it, and flew over it. The legacy of Goose will live forever in the towns of Elwood and Comac, solidified by two giant signs that tower over a nine mile stretch of road. And if my new friends and the DOT were doing a just in time management thing, the covers are coming off those signs as I speak. But we'll find out soon enough. <laughs> uh, this road is going to be traveled by tens of thousands of commuters every day, including the traffic jams. There might be a few others that pop up here and there, but I'm sworn to secrecy on that one. <laughs> when you see one of these signs or pass by this firehouse, pause for a minute to think of the legacy of this brave and heroic man. This is the house where he first learned his trade. This is his road. Many of you here are part of this and watched it happen over the course of two decades. Chris thought enough of this community and country to risk it all every day of his life for 19 years so that most of you could stay secure in your comfort zones. To many, he was a true friend, a brother, a comrade, and one deserving to have his name live on long after any of us are gone. Carmilla should be proud of her man. Eva and Mila should be very proud of their dad. Mark should be extremely proud of his brother. And I can assure you that Laura and I are proud of our sons, both of them. While our family tries to pick up the pieces and moves forward with the hope for a brighter future, rest assured, follow my finger, that other brave young men and women, like Chris, also have the calling and they will stand in guard 24-7, ready to risk it all to ensure the freedom of our way of life. That's all to you, my brothers and sisters.
finally, and I mean finally, Commissioner, <laughs> help us spread Lieutenant Reduso's story of inspiration and his legacy will live on forever. May God continue to bless the Comac Fire Department, FDNY, the brave men and women of the 106th Rescue Wing, and may God bless America. Thank you. Okay, we will now commence with the street dedication. I will ask the FDNY ceremony unit to please escort the Ragusso family, the dais, to the easel to the right of the stage. Father, we humbly bow our heads and place our prayers before you. Thank you for a morning of peace and friendship to gather in honor of you. Chris worked tirelessly to make the world a little closer to the one we would all like to live in. Lord, it is the sincerest hope and prayer of those gathered here today that the honor we pay to our brother Christopher, for the comfort to the loved ones that miss him so dearly. We pray for the souls of the warriors who died with him that day, Mark Weber, Andreas O'Keefe, Christopher Zanitas, Sean Briggs, William Posh, Carl Pennis. Please bless and watch over Chris's family and friends, most especially Carmela, Eva, Halo, Laura, John, and Mark. Bring them peace and prosperity as their husband, father, son, and brother watches over them from your son. May your Holy Spirit remain with them to bring them the peace and comfort that they deserve. We promise, Father, that the love and loyalty we feel for Chris will be inherited by his family. We will continue to support them in his absence. We will find every opportunity that we can to tell Chris's story. We will do all in our power to ensure that his legacy will continue to inspire as many as we can reach. We swear to continue to carry his mission forward, both during our service in uniform and in our personal lives. Finally, Lord, we pray for the men and women in uniform who continue to serve and protect us, both locally and abroad. Christopher Raguso dedicated his life to the safe delivery of his comrades. By the military or fire service, Chris consistently put himself in harm's way to protect and rescue them. We ask you, Lord, to bring them home safely to their loved ones, who eagerly await their return. Amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have two final presentations. We have the comment and Mrs. Moore. Thank you, and now for our final presentation from the FDNY Emble Band, Pipes and Drums. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the New York City Fire Commissioner, the FDNY Chief of Department, the Cormac Fire Department Chief of Department, and other members of the dais, we want to thank you for attending to today's very special ceremony. What a terrific show of love for our brother, New York City Fire Lieutenant, and Cormac Fire Department Honorary Chief Christopher J. Rebuso. Rest assured, none of us will ever forget him. This concludes the Street Coal renaming ceremony. Thank you again, and have a nice day.